Hi folks, welcome back to Rockstar to Guitar. I'm Dan. If you haven't subscribed already, what the hell have you been doing? Just click the subscribe button. Uh, plenty more videos to come over the following weeks, months, and even years. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about the best guitar book you've never read. What could it possibly be? Roll the credits. You kids today. Don't even know you're born. Let's say you want to learn a new solo, maybe a song, a new chord, a new riff, whatever. What do you do? You just go onto YouTube and you find a video of somebody who's already done all the hard work for you. Or you go on Ultimate Guitar and you find the interactive tab of the song you want to learn and you slow it right down to a billionth of the speed so you can learn it note perfect. Well, I tell you what, some of us had to learn by using a turntable and a vinyl record, by putting the needle at the beginning of the section you wanted to learn, and then playing along to it, and then picking the needle up, putting it back to the section, playing along with it, and doing this for hours and hours, because these were the days before CDs, and yes, I am that old. And another thing, we had to learn from a resource known as a book. And what is a book? Books were made from killing billions of trees, because that's just the way we rolled, because we were badass. Or stupid. One of the two. Okay, on a more serious note, today I want to talk about the best guitar book ever written that you've probably never read. If you have read it, go and do something else, put the kettle on, I don't care. It's called Drumroll Please Maestro. Zen Guitar by Philip Toshio Sudo. It doesn't contain any tablature, any chord diagrams, any musical notation. You're probably wondering why the hell I'm talking to you about this book. Um, but what it does contain are a plethora, I always wanted to use that word in the video, a plethora of quotes, such as Eddie Van Halen, Chet Atkins, Johnny Winters, Joan Baez, Miles Davis, the list just goes on and on, B.B. King, goes on and on and on and on and on. It will progress your playing, by the way you think about the guitar, just from these quotes. So without further ado, let's run through some of them now. Okay, so the first section is called Practice. This is a quote by Chet Atkins. It says, it takes a lot of devotion and work, or maybe I should say play, because if you love it, that's what it amounts to. I haven't found any shortcuts and I've been looking for a long time. In the last sort of month or two, I've joined a lot of beginners guitar groups to kind of see what people approaching the guitar for the first time, what their problems are, what their pain points are. So where Chet says about, it takes a lot of devotion and work and he hasn't found any shortcuts. A lot of people on these forums say something like, I'm struggling playing a bar chord, um, especially like the F bar chord. How do I, how do I play it? How is it, how can I make it easier to play? Or I can't play the C. How, you know, what am I doing wrong? Or they might say, I play for 10 minutes and my fingers are really sore. How can I make it so they're not sore? The problem is whenever you start something, start something new, whether it's a hobby or whatever, maybe you pick up a paintbrush, pick up a guitar, maybe you start exercising, whatever it is. The bottom line is for the first six months to a year, maybe two years, maybe longer, you're just gonna be a bit crap. And that's just the way it is. And I think that's where most people fall down. They'll, they'll try and play a bar chord and they'll say, oh, I, I can't do it. And they'll just give up without saying to themselves, okay, today I can't, play the bar chord but tomorrow let's let's try it again and then they might be able to play the bottom three note and I think okay there's progress there but like I said the you've just got to accept that you're gonna be a bit crap for a while here's another example many years ago I used to work in a gym I have a sports science degree I know that's really served me well over the years I worked in a gym for a few years and I used to exercise all the time, running, weight training, football, badminton, swimming, tennis, you name it, I did it. And then I hit my 30s and I just got lazy. A couple of years ago, I suddenly thought, do you know what? 
I need to get back into shape because if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. So I started running again. And I'll tell you what, the first few months of running were torture. Okay, my lungs burned, my legs ached, my back aches. I've had back problems in the past, my back locked up. I could run about a mile at most and that was it. It was just rubbish. But I knew that if I persevered with it, eventually I could run further. Just after Christmas, actually, I ran my first 10K. Now, if you'd have said to me two years ago, Dan, in a couple of years you'll be able to run 10K, I would have laughed. But I knew that starting running, for those first few months, I was just going to be rubbish. And that's just the way it is. And the same with a guitar. What you need to do is not focus on what you can't do. It's focusing on what you can do already and how you can improve it. So with the bar chord, you know, you might be choked to start with, and then eventually you'll be able to play it all over the fretboard and you'll wonder what the fuss was all about. Okay, the next quote comes from Steve Vai, the great Steve Vai. Uh, discipline, this is kind of related to the last quote we talked about, um, and he said, it takes a lot of discipline to be very proficient on your instrument. You have to really exercise your willpower. Reach down really deep within and pull out stuff you never knew you had, strength you never bothered to find before. Again, that's kind of tied into the last quote, that nobody, you know, picks up their guitar and just starts playing runs and chords and all sorts of stuff. It just, it's just not gonna happen. People have said to me over the years to do with my guitar playing, and also I'm a photographer, I've been photographing weddings for about eight or nine years, practicing photography for rough, approaching 15 years now. Um, people often said to me, oh, Dan, you're a man of many talents, which on one hand is a very flattering and a very nice thing for people to say. But on the other hand, I mean, I've been playing guitar for 31 years. And like I said, photographing for 15 years. So I didn't just pick a camera up and understand about exposure and composition and ISO and aperture and shutter speed and depth of field and all of that good stuff. It's taken years and of practice and will continue to take more years of practice. And the guitar as well. You know, like I said, I've been playing for over 30 years. I feel like I'm just scratching the surface. And that's the joy of it. I, I've come so far, but I know I've so far yet to go. And there's, there's never an end point. You never sort of say, right, well, that's the guitar sort. And then what can I learn now? You know, I mean, I'm good at many things on the guitar. I can't sweep pick to save my life. I can't finger pick to save my life. They're all on the list of things to learn. And I can't wait to sort of get to them and learn them. You know, it takes a lot of discipline to become talented in a way, you know, sort of, Sportsmen and women who are brilliant at what they do. Federer didn't just pick up a racket and was suddenly the most amazing tennis player. He's, he practices harder than anyone else on the tour, I can guarantee it, to, to become the amazing player he is today. So, discipline. Don't give up. Okay, the next quote is by Gary Bartz, who worked with Miles Davis. He said, I remember coming to a concert where they had a big catered meal set out for everyone. I went and said, Miles, man, you've got to see all this food they got here. And Miles said, I didn't come here to eat. For me, this is really to do with almost sort of mindfulness and intent. We have so many distractions around these days, social media, smartphones, electronic devices, television, etc., etc., that we can sort of have a day doing loads of different things without really doing much at all. So what I would say when it comes to the guitar and practice, even if you practice for five minutes, just switch everything off and just that five minutes, concentrate intently on what you're trying to achieve on that. Maybe you're trying again, practicing bar chords or you're practicing alternate picking or legato or whatever it is you're trying to do, but just focus on that for five minutes and just block everything else out. Maybe you do it for an hour, maybe two hours, maybe five, maybe five hours, maybe all day. However long you do it, you know, don't get distracted. I mean, I'm terrible. Earlier on, I went to look on YouTube for a guitar lesson and I farted around for 10 minutes before I found what I was looking for because I 
ended up forgetting what I went on YouTube for because I was fannying about. So like I say, just switch all distractions off and get your head down and practice intently for that period of time. Okay, two more quotes to go and then I'll let you go. I can see some of you flagging at the back there. Sorry about that. Um, this is Henry Kaiser and he said, how you play a note is just as important as what that note is. There's a song by Pink Floyd called Shine On You Crazy Diamond and it lasts for about three and a half weeks. And after about two weeks, uh, Dave Gilmour comes in with one of the most sublime notes you'll ever hear in music. Probably just gonna do him a disservice here, but it just sort of goes. Etc. etc. It's not just the note that he plays or that bend, it's the way he plays it that just absolutely floors me every time. I mean, what he could have done was this. How was that, lads? Was that all right? What do you mean, no? Again, as I referred to earlier, this is a mechanical object for guitar. It's a physical, tangible object. You know, it's easier to sort of... It's how you play those notes that defines your style. When you're playing something, it's not what you're playing necessarily, it's how you play it. Like I said, that Dave Gilmore string bend is just, you know, Check it out, Shine On You Crazy Diamond. It just literally brings tears to your eyes. It's just the most amazing guitar bend. It's so simple, but only Dave Gilmore could play like that. Okay, on to the last quote by Paul Westerberg from The Replacements. Um, this section is entitled Overthinking, and he pretty much wraps it all up by saying, I don't think about the meaning of it all. I say just plug in your damn guitar and make some noise. And on that note, here end of the lesson. Okay, folks, thanks again for watching. I'm Dan, this is Rockstar to Guitar. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you haven't subscribed, just do it now. Just, it's just a click, just do it, go on. Um, yeah, and there's, apparently there's a little bell as well. If you tap that, you get notified when I post a video, which is clever. Isn't it clever? Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this sort of slight tangent. More philosophical thoughts and musings around the guitar. Maybe you've read the book. If you have, let me know in the comments. I think you can still get it on Amazon. You might have to go through a third-party seller to get it. Yeah, let me know if you read it. Let me know if you found it useful. Or let me know if you thought it was a load of old bollocks. Okay, until next time. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.